very good morning to you all today we are taking module 3 of the paper 2 the title of today's discussion is proto renaissance circa 1280 to 1400 by the end of the chapter you will have been able to acquaint about the proto period of renaissance look at the artist of the period and understand their works the components of the module are introduction church of saint francis andrea pisano life of john the baptist chimaboe circa 1240 to 1302 chato the bodone circa 1267 to 1337 siena school duccio da bonisena siena school simon martini 1280 to 1344 siena school ambrogio and pietro lorenzetti introduction Though many medieval conventions survived into 14th century and the international gothic style a decorative and two dimensional form of representation was in vogue some artists began to incorporate their observations of physical reality and the ancient greek and roman art into their work the term proto renaissance refers to this artistic period spanning the 13th and 14th centuries in italy the proto renaissance occurred in a northern enclave of present day italy northern italy over the course of 2 to 3 centuries because of several converging factors it comprised of a number of small but vital artistic changes which represented a gradual break from the medieval art it made way for the early renaissance that took place in 15th century italy what was important here was that the area in which it began was stable enough to allow explorations in art to develop especially in tuscany where handicraft production and trade were developing rapidly and many anti federal reforms were introduced proto renaissance art was marked by sensual visual representation of the real world a secular principle and a profound interest in classical legacy of antiquity some art historians have identified the earliest manifestation of the proto renaissance in tuscan architecture of the 11th to 13th centuries the architecture was marked by polychromatic marble incrustation fine proportional articulation of the walls and classical architectural details that contracted the heaviness of the romanesque style gothic elements in proto renaissance architecture as seen in the work of arnolfo the cambio and others imparted balance and tranquility to the structures a feeling of three dimensionality and influences of late classical art are inherent in proto renaissance sculpture for example the work of nicola pisano and others the painters of the period including p cavallini of rome and specially giotto of florence achieved a remarkable tangibility and material persuasiveness of form analogous phenomena particularly a heightening of the sensual verisimilitude of images are evident in italian literature of this period represented by the poetry of dante and of the 
डोलो स्टिल डुओ स्वीट न्यू स्टाइल स्कूल प्रोटो रेनेसांस टेंडेंसीज व्हिच कोएक्जिस्टेड विद वाइड स्प्रेड गोथिक करंट्स थ्रू द ट्रेचेंटो वर एडॉप्टेड बाय सच आर्टिस्ट ऑफ द अर्ली रेनेसा एज एफ ब्रुनेलेस्की डोनेटेलो एंड मसाचियो The main types of art practiced during the Proto Renaissance period included fresco, mural painting, tempera, panel painting, book illustrations, relief sculpture, goldsmithing, and other forms of metal work. Church of Saint Francis. The Italian Church of Saint Francis was one of the first architectural structures to contribute to the new humanism. related with renaissance and expressed in the painters of florence namely cimabue mondon and siena namely duccio martini and lorenzetti brothers the fresco scenes of the life of saint francis were portrayed with much greater realism than contemporary styles of byzantine art cimabue and mondon what the artist here in this work life sees human figures conveying human emotions made their first appearance in european paintings it might be important to know that florence and siena schools of painting though rivals in so many ways grew out of 13th century painting traditions and engendered individual artists who became famous in their own time the byzantine influence continued to provide models of dramatic pathos and narrative iconography as well as stylized features including the use of gold for drapery folds and striking contrast of highlights and shadows in the modeling of individual forms andrea pisano life of john the baptist in 1330 andrea pisano C 1219 to 1348 was commissioned to create a pair of gilded bronze doors for the Florentine baptistry of San Giovanni situated directly in front of the Pisa Cathedral. The project took 6 years to complete and display 20 scenes from the life of John the Baptist personifying the virtues that he stood for. the effect is two dimensional and decorative a grid of 28 rectangles with repeated quatre foils filled with graceful patterned poses of delicate human figures within the quatre foil frames however the figures compositions create the illusion of three dimensional forms moving within the described spaces of natural and architectural worlds chimabue circa 1240 to 1302 one of the first great italian painters and mosaicist to break from italo byzantine style chimabue also known as seni di pepi had a natural bent towards naturalism he rendered his figures with more life like proportions and shading he is also known as teacher of jato important painter of the proto renaissance period his great contemporary dante recognized the importance of cimabue and placed him at the forefront of italian painters cimabue's palette is delicate with shaded tones notably in the angels wings the figures take on real solidity and an unprecedented visual presence the artist prepared the ground for 14th century florentine art his work raised the issues that would preoccupy his successors notably jato the representation of space the representation of body and light The master was painted around 1280 for the main altar of the church of Saint 
Trinita in French and is housed in Mosy du Louvre of Paris, France. The definition of Madonna is Maestra, which means majesty. The Virgin Mary is sitting on the throne with Jesus on her lap. Chimbabwe's Modena still shows the main traits of Byzantine style. A profusion of gold and almost total absence of volume and perspective. You might want to compare this one with those drawn by Duccio di Monesena and Jato as a separate exercise. How precious, elaborated and refined is the throne where the Virgin Mary is delicately sitting. The gold background, the lines of gold in Mary's drapery and the long thin figures are characteristics of Byzantine style. The elaborate throne has no visible support at the back but seems instead to rise upward, disregarding the materiality of its weight, as in Byzantine and medieval art. The Christ child is depicted with the proportions and gestures of an adult. The four prophets at the foot of the throne embody the old dispensation as the foundation of the new. Art historiographers from the 14th century to the present have recognized the art and career of Chimabue as the dividing line between the old and the new traditions in Western European painting. Chato da Bodone, circa 1267 to 1337. Chato first painted in Upper Church of San Francisco in Assisi. Then between 1304 and 1310, he painted the massive cycle of biblical art in the Capella degli Scrovegni in Padua Arena Chapel. As the pupil of Chimabue, he not only learned from his master, but imitated nature so perfectly that he removed the crude Byzantine style of painting and created a new modern way of drawing, taking inspiration from nature itself. Boccaccio, an ardent admirer of ancient Rome, described Jato as having brought the art of painting out of medieval darkness into hell, medieval darkness into daylight. He compared Jato to the Greek classical painter, Apelles as master of disillusionism, Petrarch who was an avid collector of classical texts and had written extensively about benefits of nature, owned a painting by Jato. The beauty of this painting wrote Petrarch around 1361. The ignorant cannot comprehend, but master of the art marvel at it. Petrarch thus shared Boccaccio's view that Giotto appealed to the intellectually and artistically enlightened. Ignorance by implication was associated with the darkness of the Middle Ages. Compared to Chimabue's virgin and child enthroned, Jato's panel of the same subject, painted about 30 years later for the Church of the Agnesenti, All Saints, in Florence, exhibits greater spatial consistency and sculptural solidity while retaining some of Chimabue's conventions. The position of the figures within the symmetrical compositions reflect Chimabue's influence. Gone 
However, our Mary's modesty, inclined head and delicate gold folds in her drapery. Instead, light and shadow play gently across her stocky form and her action holding her child's leg instead of pointing him out to us seems less contrived. This colossal Mary overwhelms her hellos overlapped faces. In spite of the heretic scale and the formal and thrown image and flat gold background, Jato has created the sense that has that these are fully three-dimensional beings whose plainly draped bulky bodies inhabit real space. The virgin solid torso is revealed by her thin tunic and Jato's angels are substantial solid whose foreshortened postures project from the foreground towards us, unlike those of Chimabue. We stay on the surface along lateral stripes composed of overlapping screens of color. Jato's masterwork is the decoration of the Scrovagini Chapel in Padua, also known as the Arena Chapel, completed around 1305. This fresco cycle depicts the life of the Virgin and the life of Christ. It is regarded as one of the supreme masterpieces. Here, figures are not stylized or elongated and do not follow the Byzantine models of his contemporaries. They are solidly three-dimensional, have faces and gestures that are based on close observations and are clothed not in swirling formalized drapery but in garments that hang naturally and have form and weight. He also took bold steps in foreshortening and with the having characters face inwards, with their back towards the observer creating the illusion of space. The figures occupy compressed settings with naturalistic elements, often using forced perspective devices so that they resemble stage sets. This similarity is increased by Jato's careful arrangement of figures in such a way that the viewer appears to have particular place and even an involvement in many of the scenes. On the north and south walls, three levels of rectangular scenes illustrate the lives of Mary her parents, Anna and Joachim, and Jesus. Below the narrative scenes on the north and south walls are virtues and vices, according to the traditional left-right symbolism. As the viewer enters the chapel, the virtues are on the right and the vices on the left. Facing the observer is the channel arch containing Gabriel's mission at the top. Two other events from Jesus' life, the betrayal of Judas or the left and the visitation on the right and two illusionistic chapels. The central band of medallion spans the bolt, crossing a brilliant lapis blue star-sprangled sky in which large portrait is Plot like glowing moons. At top left, Jesus performs his first miracle, changing water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana. The wine steward, looking very much like the jars of new wine himself, sees the results. To the right is the raising of Lazarus, where boldly medaled individualized figures twist in space. Through their postures and gestures, they react to the human drama by pleading for Jesus' help or by expressing 
either astonishment at the miracle or the revulsion at the smell of death. Jesus is separated from the crowd. His transforming gesture is highlighted against the dark blue of the background. His profile face logged in communication with the similarity isolated Lazarus, whose eyes still fixed in death. Let us know that the miracle is just about to happen. On the lower register, where Jesus' grief stricken followers lament over his dead body, Jato conveys palpable human sufferings, drawing viewers into the circle of personal grief. The stricken virgin pools close to her dead son, communing with mute intensity, while John the evangelist flings his arm back in the convulsive despair, and others hunch over the corpse. Jato has linked his somber scene much as the linked the scene of Judah's pact and visitation across the century arc to the morning of Lazarus on the register above through the seemingly continuous diagonal implied by, by the sharply angled hillside behind both scenes and by the rhyming repetition of mourners in each scene facing in opposite directions who throw back their arms to express their emotional state. Viewers would know that the mourning in both scenes is resolved by resurrection, portrayed in the last picture in this state. Following traditional medieval practice, the fresco program is full of scenes and symbols like these that are intended to be contemplated as coordinated or contrasting juxtapositions. What is new here? is the way Jato draws us into the experience of these events. This direct emotional appeal not only allows viewers to imagine these scenes in relation to their own life experiences, it is also embodies the new Franciscan emphasis on personal devotion rooted in empathetic responses to sacred stories. Siena School, Duccio da Boexenna, like their Florentine rival Sinese painters, were rooted in 13th century pictorial traditions, especially those of Byzantine art. Sinese painting emphasized the decorative potential of narrative painting with brilliant, javel-like colors and elegantly posed figures. Siena's foremost painter was Duccio the Boni Segna, active 1278-1318, whose creative synthesis of Byzantine and French Gothic sources transformed the tradition in which he worked. His imaginative narration, his drawing, his sensitive gradation of color, and surprisingly deep pictorial and landscape spaces even surpass those of the Florentine artist. Duccio is more three-dimensional than the former, but less so than the latter. The throne rests on a solid horizontal, but it rises at the back at the oblique angle, and four of the angels are suspended in a flat gold Space. Duccio has emphasized vivid color, an abundance of gold, and elaborate architectural detail to enhance the glory of Jesus and his mother. The tension between naturalism and flat patterning is a formal echo of the shift between the material and the spiritual worlds embodied by the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. In this painting, as in the Chimabue and the Jatos, Mary is queen of heaven and 
her son is its future king. Between 1308 and 1311, Giuccio and his workshop painted a huge altarpiece commissioned by Siena Cathedral and known as the Maestra, the Majesty. It is dominated by a large representation of the Virgin and Child in Majesty. Thus, its title is Maestra, flanked by 20 angels and 10 saints including the four patron saints of the Siena, kneeling in the foreground. Above and, above and below this lateral tableau were small narrative scenes from the last days of the life of the Virgin, above. And the infancy of Christ spread across Predela. Siena School, Simone Martini, 1344. Giuccio's student Simone Martini presents a still broader spectrum of themes and styles. He also made his start in Siena with a master, painted as fresco for the Palazzo Publico in a currently variation of Giuccio's altar painting in cathedral. Martini's further work in Italy increasingly reveals influences from the French Gothic book painting, as evident in the frescoes of Martini's chapel in the lower church of San Francisco in Assisi. And the artist in fact became a court painter in Naples to Robert I of Anjou in 1317. His most famous work, however, was commissioned in 1333 for the cathedral of his native Siena, an altarpiece of Annunciation flanked by two saints that he painted given below. Siena School, Ambrogio and Pietro Lorenzini. Two other noteworthy Sienese painters were the brothers Ambrogio Lorenzini C. 1290, 1352, and Pietro Lorenzini, C. 1280, and 1348. In all probability, students of Giuccio. Their altar paintings and frescoes, which also reveal some influence of Giotto, are more emotional and more lively than those of their Sienese contemporaries. Ambrosio's major work, The Monumental Portrayal of Allegory of Good Government, 1338 to 1340, Plazo Publico, Siena, is not only the first landscape and cityscape in the European art, but also reveals an understanding of the city government of Siena in its innumerable details.